Bonsoir tout le monde, bonsoir tout le super branché émission Transition. Nous vous bienvenue dans la première de Transition pour moi novembre. Comme nous connaissons chaque vendredi dans les ça, c'est un rendez-vous nous casser à toute famille pour garder pour suivre l'émission ça. Et comme nous connaissons chaque vendredi tout, objectif nous c'est éduquer, informer, motiver, conseiller. Et nous connaissons tout chaque vendredi tout, c'est là pour nous porter un sujet qui est important pour même cap vivre pour même cap fonctionner quel que soit dans le domaine pour vivre là et dans ce sens ça Josia nous pense si j'ai ça de côté pour moi les quoi attire attention et là même important pour vous pour comprendre qui gens système éducation fonctionner dans la communauté Salisbury donc c'est dans ce sens ça Josia nous gagne deux monde deux responsables deux leaders qui peuvent parler nous sur ça qui est à comment Board of Education a fonctionné dans Wicomico County. Nous avons ça pour nous plus élargir parce que je dis à nous pile parole qui peut valer. Nous avons une pause, nous avons tourné après pour nous présenter deux mounsayos qui peuvent partager information avec nous, mais si tout, partager comment Board of Education ou bien Conseil d'éducation dans le comté Wicomico a fonctionné. Nous avons branché, nous avons tourné après. Nous retourner après la pause là, j'ai noté annoncé là, je dis à si j'ai non pas basé sur comment le système d'éducation a fonctionné dans sa liste. Mais pour nous permettre de intervenir dans nos bien un but de sa quoi le et pour nous permettre tout, tout puis bien comprendre, nous allons faire un petit switch en anglais. Today, as I already talked about, it's an honor for us to meet two leaders, two powerful leaders in our community, especially in the education field. We're gonna see, or we already see, what we're gonna talk about, you have already an idea about. Hi, Hi. Dr. Helene. Yes. And Mr. Good How good. are you doing? Very good. Yeah. So as I said, we are very happy, and it's an honor for us to be able to meet with you, to be able to talk about how the education system operate and the community but first of all as they all they always said lady first let's start with that <laughs> calling can you share with us first of all before the education system who is that powerful leader <laughs> who am i <laughs> well i am the superintendent of schools so I am um, the responsible for the education, for the organization of Wicomico County Public Schools, which is 24 schools, 15,000 students. So um, it is a lot of work, a big job, but it's something that I've done for 40 years now and love my work. Of course, I really enjoy working with Dr. Briggs as well. So we're happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Okay, thank you for, for meeting with us. Let's see about the <laughs> So I'm uh, Alex. I support Dr. Hanlon. I'm the assistant superintendent. Um, I've spent all 21 years of my career here in Wicomico County, and I look forward to uh, sharing some information with you guys in your community tonight um, to see how you guys can continue to work with us and support the students of Wicomico County. Good. So even if you 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 didn't want to talk uh, more about yourself. Okay, I can understand that, so <laughs> let's continue and let's go straight to the topic of the day. How the Board of Education operate in the community? I know it's a big question, but I think it will be 
great to talk about what we are doing in the Board of Education. Well, it is, it is a, <laughs> a big, very complex organization. Um, but basically, we are educating students pre-kindergarten, sometimes even earlier, but mostly pre-kindergarten until they graduate from high school as seniors, mostly 18-year-olds at that point. And we are uh, preparing them to go on to careers and or colleges, um, whatever their aspirations are beyond high school. We want to provide them the skills and the knowledge that they need in order to um, to go on beyond high school to whatever their goals may be. Okay, so it's uh, from pre-kindergarten through mm -hmm. high school. Yes. But uh, by talking, okay, talking about high school, mm -hmm. do you meet any challenges about the high school after the high school? The what is the percent of uh, students who go to college? The overall percentage, uh, Dr. It's Briggs? About 68 percent mm -hmm. of our students go to either a two or four year um, college or university. Mm -hmm. um, some go straight into the job force, workforce, okay. and some military, um, and some unfortunately aren't sure exactly yes, what to do. Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, so we are in the college part, so we we know the Board of Education manage the the public school, right? Mm -hmm. So does any difference in private and a public school curriculum? So in Maryland, in public school, we must adhere to the um, the Maryland curriculum, the Maryland standards um, curriculum framework. Um, and in the private schools, they don't necessarily have to adhere to those guidelines. So um, it could be different, but all public schools in the state of Maryland have to adhere to those same standards. So, but I can't speak to what a private school in, yes, no. in the mm -hmm. county would do. Mm -hmm. um, they have a little bit more freedom to, um, they could utilize our curriculum or they, they might be able to do something else. Okay. So talking about curriculum, so what kind of courses you have for, from pre-kindergarten to high school? We have a lot. Um, <laughs> first of all, just when we talk about pre-kindergarten, that's we are trying to offer the opportunity for all four-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's watching at home and they have a four-year-old, we would love to have them in our school system and we have some spaces still okay. available. Um, so starting as early as four, um, mm -hmm. And we teach everything, that, you know, the English, math, social studies, and science, and we have... So you said from four years old? From four years old. Okay, all let me inform or let me translate, mm -hmm. because I think it's a, an important part Very, for yeah. the community. And not only that, I want to attract attention to the people who are watching the mission. Sometimes we don't have to pay attention, or we have to say that if we are from the six years ago, we have to go to school. But now, why do we go to the school or the Board of Education? The school has started to go to school after four years. Thank you. Do you understand what I said? I have no <laughs> idea. Four. <laughs> <laughs> <Four. laughs> so, so now, let's get back to the answer. Gotcha. Because I wanted to, to inform them about yes. the, the four years. And that is, that's very important, so thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, if I could just add before you go on, it's especially important for English language learners to start as early as possible okay. in our schools um, to learn the language and begin to mm -hmm. um, integrate into the school system. Yeah. So. Yeah, and for our ability to work with the parents as well. So. Okay, so you have a program for the parents as well? We support the parents, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of um, parent universities where we we pull, we kind of survey the parents, find out what needs they have, um, and then we design our own sort of curriculum to work with the parents to help meet the needs of their kids. We heard firsthand they don't know how to, some of them struggle helping their kid maybe say with math homework. Well, okay. we, yes, this is an issue about, yeah. about math homework. So <laughs> we worked with our math supervisor um, okay. and some of our math teachers, and we actually designed a course where we invited parents in and gave them some tips and tools for helping their students when they come home and have that math homework. Do you mind if I translate? Don't mind at all. Yes, okay. L'empathie, ça, ça, le message, et le fait passer, c'est que 
gen programme même yo mette sous pied pour aider parents yo gen technique pour travail mathématique à tout monde comme ça qu'arrivé en pile parents et pas seulement parents haïtiens c'est de façon large là où gen programme ça yo y a pour technique y a besoin mais qui gens ou supposé faire mathématique avec tout monde de, de technique qui est aussi simple qui pas compliqué qui permet tout tout non seulement aider tout tout mais aider petit tout pour le cas réussir dans la classe ou bien dans dans ça la pas Yes. You're welcome. Even if you don't know this. <laughs> and then, in addition to obviously, we teach math, social studies, science, mm -hmm. reading, and writing. But we also um, have a very strong fine arts program. Um, we we value the arts and um, have that in all of our schools. Okay. And from which grade? From pre-K, from mm -hmm. four-year-olds all the way up. Well, they are exposed to a well-rounded math, curriculum. Math, math, also. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it looks different, right? Okay, so, yes, as a four-year-old math, we're learning about numbers, and then as they get older, we're doing more and more with those numbers every year. But yes, as early as four, once we get them in our um, building, um, we're exposing them to a wide variety of um, content. Okay, that's a good point. So, let me do my, my other job again. <laughs> so, no, Patissa, li li que. Yo apprend si moun yo depi nan jan kreo la dia, depi nan ti 4-4, matematik, lekti, ekriti, et pui desen, sa ou dou an la. Sa ti, depi nan, nan pipiti la, jati moun nan komanse ap apren ba ay sa ou, donk la vin permet li, ou fyo amuse yo ti moun abrandi, la pipi bien kompon, et pui la pipi bien, pi bien eksperimente nan chak mati sa ou. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> you don't want to add anything? <laughs> Um, no, I think he covered that that topic well. It's um, mm -hmm. it, it's it is a well-rounded curriculum, um, not only fine arts but um, phys physical education, health, um, just a lot yes, of things. Yes, obviously those core subjects of math and reading, and then social studies yes, because and science. Are sometimes I see you. Okay, the book. If I can say like that, the board of the mm -hmm. education, they mm -hmm. more focus on math, math reading. And I can see this here, they remove the spelling part. Mm -hmm. And can you share <laughs> with me why you, <laughs> you remove that part? Yeah. We didn't really remove spelling. That's um, we 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 have been working since the fall of the year um, answering questions of parents who don't quite understand that it is part of in the English language arts instruction. And rather than having an isolated list of words like I had when I was a student in school, where here's your spelling list for this mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. teachers will develop lists of words based upon the other content that they're teaching so that that list is more meaningful to students. Mm -hmm. If they're studying a particular topic in social studies, for example, that list may include words that are relevant to that topic that they're studying in social studies. And so they're still learning to spell. They're still um, held accountable for how they learn to spell. It's just part of the English language arts program rather than a separate list and a separate grade. Great. And I think I can add something. Mm -hmm. the, the way you, you are doing it uh, right now, I think it's very important and interesting. Mm -hmm. Why I said that? Because I know every week children has um, like a reading to do. So they has a question, they has to think about and they are they has to to give the main idea. I think they can uh, learn vocabulary from that. Mm -hmm. Also even if you don't they, they give the list of words anymore, but they're still learning. They're still doing the, the spelling part. And we believe they're learning it even better. Instead of exactly. it instead of it being in isolation. Exactly. Those words mean nothing to them. Mm -hmm. But now yes, they're right. applying it. Yes, and so they put it, them in a sentence and they, they can uh, they do sometimes they just need to use a dictionary. Mm -hmm. But they learn it, put it in a sentence and make um, how I can say that as a topic mm -hmm. and talk about the, the, the word. I think it's a and a, a, it's a great way to, to do the spelling. We're, we're glad you agree. <laughs> no, it's the reason why I, I, I asked that. It's the reason why. I appreciate so, your answer. Yeah. So, 
I have, an, I have another question. It's about the PTA meeting. What is about? Okay, so parent participation in our schools is very important. We want parents to be involved. Um, some of our schools have a well-organized PTA group where parents do organize fundraisers and do different things like that to support the schools. Some of our schools actually don't even have an organized PTA. That doesn't mean we don't need those parents involved. And it doesn't mean that those parents aren't involved, they're just involved in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, it's important that parents are communicating with their teachers. Mm -hmm. It's important that they're encouraging their students to get good grades, to come to school every day. Attendance is critically important. Um, it's in important that the parents are encouraging proper behaviors. Unfortunately, sometimes... Okay. So, sorry yep. if I stop you. So, the PTA meeting, it's about the meet with their parents. Correct. And so, when, they get to, when parents have the opportunity to come in and meet with their teachers, that is critically important for, that, for them to do so. However, we're also understanding that parents with work schedules and other commitments and other kids that that's not always feasible it's not the you know I can all come in you know somebody stays at home with the other kids and somebody comes in and meets with the parents that's not practical anymore not in our society right now so um, but we don't that doesn't mean we don't value that interaction so whether it's use of emails phone calls we have a class dojo I don't know if you know anything about class dojo I get it on my phone. yep my phone, my phone as well we both have fourth graders yes. um, the, that's important parent communication and so that even when I'm at work worrying about all 15,000 kids I can get an alert on my phone about my one mm -hmm. that's in fourth grade mm -hmm. from yeah. his teacher you know so what, what is or how to me that's correct um, so it, it's just important that they stay involved um, but understanding that it looks different for every parent um, we do have some parents who come in and volunteer because their schedule allows it. Again, if you can come in and volunteer, we welcome you in our schools, but that's not expected or possible for all parents. Talking about volunteer, how, how parents can be more involved on the children education? I would, I would encourage parents to go in and speak with, talk to their teachers, but talk to the school administration about what their needs are in, in the school in terms of what they need parents to, um, to, to help with, mm -hmm. to be volunteers for. Principals and uh, administrators and teachers are always looking for additional sets of hands and you know it would, it would probably vary greatly based upon what that parent is comfortable doing, what their strengths are or um, areas of the, maybe a, a skill background that they have, a career that they have where mm -hmm. Um, they can lend support, but that is that is um, something that we're always welcome. We're always open to parents coming in and helping in classrooms or in the office or whatever the need is at school okay. event. So that means you will need the, the, the you will need parents to be more involved in the education system, like uh, be a volunteer, right? Yes. Okay. And any ways that parents can be involved is going to help their children in school. Okay, so the next part is that we're going to propose that we're going to talk about the implication of parents and the contribution of the children who are doing the volunteer in the school and the education of the children in the school. We're going to propose that we're going to propose.
nous retournons après pause là, nous nous te parler dans première partie à sous ça qui ouais à comment Board of Education ou bien conseil éducation en Waikomiko County fonctionner. Donc nous gain avec nous deux représentants board là qui partagent quelques informations avec nous qui permettent nous comprendre comment board là fonctionner et qui permettent nous tout connait comment nous ca aider au plus avancer dans éducation petite nous. Et j'ai été à j'ai été dit dans première partie à yo tout depuis petit tout gain 4 ans les ca pour years les ca commencer à l'école. Donc ça il dit pas qu'il était petit tout chita la caille ou ca voyer l'école pour petit tout autant de fois il apprend plus bonnet ou autant de fois la plus bon pour. So I just say a to summary about what we talk about in the first part. So as I already mentioned, I think people can ask. Easy. Easy question. But let's continue. Before uh, before that, and we can call and we can relay to, we can relay, we can voice message. But the best thing is to relay to participate in the emission. I just want to let them know they can go and and we all they say relay. Okay, really. Okay, really. Okay, really. Yes, good. <laughs> we need to see. <laughs> okay. In the first part, we talk about um, PTA, but what is the meaning of PTA meeting? Really, the the true meaning. Sometimes it, it gets kind of lost. Sometimes, but the mm -hmm. true meaning is for the dialogue between the teacher and the parent about the student. Okay. Why I ask that because I'm a parent, like mm -hmm. hey, hey, as you can see. Sometimes when they invite people to the PTA meeting, they don't know what does that mean. Right. So it's the reason why I wanted to pay attention on what we are doing and PTA meeting. So let me translate for the mm -hmm. community who is watching the show. PTA meeting now, comme c'est sous moi qui sont parents. PTA meeting now par l'autre bagay, c'est on rencontre. Bodla mette sous pied à travers l'école publique yo, pe ma prape nou Bodla gere système l'école publique nan Waikomiko County. So, PTA meeting nan son rencontre ki fait entre parents avec professe. Donc, sa yeti sa permet ou pose question, konen koman PTA to ap evolue nan l'école li. Et j'am toujou di la, et m toujou rappele nou ke li très important pou nou implike en plus nan edikasyon PTA nou. Se pa jis selman di piti tou ka l'ekol, piti tou e, e non bon l'ekol, men li empotan chak le gen rencont lan, maksimum de fò ou ka fè, se implike ou nan sa ki wè a rencont ki gen yo, etan kou nan Waikomiko, yo palo de piti e meeting, sa yi di son rencont ki fèt ak paran, e pui l'ekol la, plu presizeman avek profesye ou koukon koman piti tou a progresi. So, I said, I let them know about the piti e meeting, what what is the purpose of the PTA meeting? This is a meeting, as you said, mm -hmm. between parents and teachers. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to to let people know what what we are doing in the PTA meeting. Can I add one thing? Mm -hmm. if, of course. Um, <laughs> just if parents want to talk to their teachers, and that's critically important, they do not have to wait until a PTA meeting or if they they have to work at night and they can't come to the PTA meeting. They, they can ask for a meeting. They, yes, a they can ask. Yes. In fact, that's often yeah. okay. a better time. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes what you'll find in a PTA meeting is that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Here. Briggs, because you've been in schools more recently <laughs> than I've been to running out between two doctors. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let, let's talk about education doctors. <laughs> Um, often a PTA meeting will begin with a business meeting of the PTA organization. So the leaders, the parent leaders of that organization would come together in, a, uh, in an auditorium type style and would talk about the business of the PTA, which might be, we have a fundraiser coming up, how many of you will volunteer to sell popcorn or whatever, mm -hmm. um, so the business, and how they're going to raise money to support the school. That business meeting might last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe. maybe. A half hour and then parents are dismissed to go meet, half hour. Yeah. With, <laughs> go meet with, yeah. with um, teachers in their classrooms. But often, if there's you know, 10 or 15 parents that want to meet with your child's teacher, and you have something more, 
involved that you want to talk with the teacher about, probably the better thing to do is to schedule a separate meeting. Because often at the PTA meeting where there yeah. are other parents mm -hmm. waiting, you don't get into a lot of detail. The teacher might tell you, this is what we're working on right now, your child's doing really well, or your child should work mm -hmm. a little harder in this particular area. But um, a more uh, in-depth conversation should occur beyond the PTA meeting, if that makes sense. And if language is, a, if there's a barrier, mm -hmm. which some members of the community might have a language barrier and not feel comfortable um, communicating with the teacher, let, letting us, letting the school know that in advance, we can arrange either to have a translator present or okay. some sort of any language. In any language. Okay. Yes. Yep. okay, that's good. So I think uh, it will be useful to share the information with people. So, et ça, deux docteurs, yo, partagez avec nous. C'est que yo, quand nous connais petit et meeting, non, même là, la donne parce que petit et meeting, non, comme nous connais et mission, c'est permettre parents, yo rencontrer avec professeur et surtout dans la première partie et rencontre ça et c'est pas une rencontre qui dure longtemps qui dure en 30 à 45 minutes maximum donc dans la première partie rencontre ça le plus souvent yo partage information avec par sur ça qui ouais comment l'école yo fonctionner ou bien qui ça qui permet l'école de jouer une cob pour yo fonctionner mais après ça si ou ouais voilà rencontre ça est difficile pour pour communiquer avec un professeur parce que c'est un pile parent c'est pas seul ou même il est important pour demander une rencontre individuelle avec parents, avec professeurs, pour qu'on permettre tout bien connaître comment petit tout a progressé et comment petit tout a évolué dans sa dans l'école. Did you get me? Uh, L'école. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is it. So as I'm still waiting for calls, and to know what, no calls, I need to know what the board are doing against. The bullying, as we know, that a huge issue for the kids. The bullying, but it's not yeah. a. It's easy. You think it's easy? <coughs> you can answer. We can answer. Okay. Yeah, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, we know that's an issue, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and mm -hmm. we we hope that students develop relationships with adults in our buildings, with whether it's a teacher, or a guidance counselor, or an administrator and that they would feel comfortable going and talking to someone about that. So mm -hmm. that that is really how we can help them um, find a solution to whatever is going on. There's, there, are, um, there are other processes that are in place for reporting bullying. If someone's not as comfortable talking to someone, there are bullying report forms that we can fill out. Um, so, but I think the most important thing is making sure that working with students closely enough that they feel comfortable talking to an adult about whatever problems they're so experiencing. There, there's someone or there's a place where the, the kid can go to talk about the bullying issue or? Yes. If, okay. Yes. We have guidance counselors in our schools and could be a school nurse, it could be really anyone that the student is comfortable having okay. that conversation with because it isn't always necessarily the classroom teacher that they feel comfortable with. Um, it could be any adult in the building, it could be the cafeteria employee, it could be anyone in the adult, anyone in the building that once they report what's going on, that person is going to seek assistance in helping that child solve the problem. Okay. I thank you answer the question for our yes, there's nothing else for now. Okay. What do you need? Other more? Other questions? Other questions? You would like to have more? Yeah, more questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's wait. Let's wait. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. just following up on what Dr. Hannah was saying, communication is the key. If yes. we don't know about a situation, we, can we cannot do anything about it. Yeah. Um our we have very caring staff who care about kids and want to help them in any way possible. Um, so it's just getting that information so that we can do an investigation and we can try to get to the root of the issue so that we can help those kids. Because we don't want any, I don't, I don't want my son bullied, I don't want your son bullied, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be happening. Um, and if we can address it, we most certainly do. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, let's continue because I'm still ready. It's okay. So.
<laughs> so we talk about PTA, we talk about how a parent can be more involved, mm -hmm. and uh, the, we talk about uh, the volunteer thing, and which level a parent can be a volunteer. All levels. They can volunteer in elementary school, middle school, and high school. Um, most parents, if I'm being honest, are more comfortable at the elementary level, but we welcome volunteers at all, at all levels. But most happen at elementary. Okay. So uh, before we have the show, we talk about the, the job opportunities for, for people in the community. Can you share it with us? Oh, for career jobs? Mm -hmm. Yes, most certainly. Um, as Dr. Hanlon said, we have a large school system <laughs> um, with over 15,000 kids, close to 3,000 employees. So we need um, good quality people to do a number of things. Obviously teachers, <laughs> um, but we also need instructional assistants, people who help in the classroom. Um, we need uh, secretaries, um, custodial staff, cafeteria staff, um, maintenance, facilities, we have a wide variety of needs because we're basically, you know, Dr. Hamlin leads up a, a very large organization, so we, we need um, constant help. Substitute teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where they can go, go. to apply? So, no, I will add yes. that. So yes. go to our website, okay. wcboe.org, and there's actually a link for careers. Okay. and. Um, multiple opportunities are posted there and it kind of rotates so if you don't see something today check back next week and there might be other opportunities as well but talk, talk a little um, dr freeze about um a couple weeks ago at um, pastor tucson's church yeah so reverend tucson um and i have a good working relationship and he had invited me to come in and talk with some of the members of his congregation okay. so myself and dr pavick our hr director visited talked to probably about 35 or 40 people. It was a good turnout on a Saturday, and I shared in a little bit more detail what I just shared with you in regards to some of those opportunities that we have in our school system. And that, you know, we have a diverse student population, and we want and need a diverse workforce to help meet the needs of those kids. And okay. so, so that means uh, uh, you need uh, people, for example, to, uh, who speak Creole, French, Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, we do. So I think uh, it's a good thing to inform the community. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, ça, docteur, nous voulons faire nous connaître aujourd'hui à que il y a une position, il y a un job qui disponible dans la communauté, plus précisément dans l'éducation. Donc, ça dit si on veut appliquer, il faut aller sur le site là, c'est wboec.org. Wcboe. W B C B O E. Yes. So, you can link that. So, the link is C B O E. O L G A. So, you can choose the post you feel more comfortable than that you can complete to apply for a good job. Because you have the community that you have that speaks multiple languages: Creole, French, English, Spanish. So, you need people who have the competence. So, you can apply for a good job. Pas sous senti qu'à fitoir bien pas sous senti que Wapka est rempli responsabilité. This is it. I said the last word was responsibility. Responsibility. <laughs> so let's move in for our I don't think uh, people are afraid to ask questions. I don't think so. <laughs> Nous carrelé, nous ca oui mais ça mais nous carrelé pour nous pour participer dans l'émission parce que me pense c'est vraiment important pour nous surtout nous même qui dans zone Salisbury, Fruitland, là extrêmement important pour bien dire dans compter Wicomico ou bien Wicomico pour nous connait comment pour nous plus impliquer nous dans formation petite nous dans éducation petite nous parce que les ou gain petite ou voyez l'école ou juste voyez l'école mais gain des bagay ou pa konnen comment la fonctionner dans éducation petite ou bien dans système éducation donc la empêche plus agir à la et et de façon intelligente 
pour qu'on permette petit tout pour progresser et en même temps la bombe pour et n'a pas pour tout deux docteurs font comprendre que n'a pas faire volontaire quel que soit niveau a pour système non pour système éducation non ouais comme il faut so I don't want to because it's not time yet. I don't want to to ask my my last question. But for now, what I wanted to know, what is the big challenge you ever met in the board of education system? This is a big one? That is a big question. Oh, wow. Well. That's a big question. But I know you are very smart. You really <laughs> find face with a variety of challenges every day. Yeah. <laughs> every day. Um, pr probably one of the things that we've already talked about, and that is parent involvement. Because we see how important that is. And um, so we're constantly um, working on ways to increase communication and encourage our parents to get involved. We, we do struggle sometimes with discipline problems in the school. I would not be uh, being truthful if I didn't say that. But um, again, parent involvement is so critically important when we deal with situations that involve or that um, have to do with student discipline. So those are the things that come to but, mind right off the top. Yeah, both of those I support. Uh, I would also say, like, uh, as a former high school principal, Dr. Hanlon was a former high school principal as well. Um, getting students to um, see the value in their education and getting them to see the value of earning that high school diploma and how earning that degree opens up other opportunities for them in years to come. Um, many see it, but we do have a small percentage of our population who just do, do not see the value in earning that, they're earning that degree. Um, and then that causes an issue in the schools because they're not motivated to learn they're not interested in going to class and doing what they're supposed to be doing. And you can imagine how that... Mm -hmm. The then, challenge. Yes, that's the challenge. The challenge. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you cannot, uh, I can say force, but you cannot ask a, a, a child to stay in class if he doesn't want. No, and so our job is to try to find a variety of ways to reach them. Okay. Whether we have um, our CTE, Career and Technology um, Education um, Center, where Students can go to Parkside High School and learn some of the trades, whether it's working on a car or building a house or working on computers and engineering. Oh, it's like a handmade thing. Yep. A lot of hands-on engaging so, instead of just sitting in a, a, a yeah, class. Yeah. So um, we have those opportunities. We have a VPA program, Visual and Performing Arts, for maybe somebody who loves to sing or likes to perform so that they can share their artistic talents that way. Um, and then we have advanced placement where um, AP classes for those students who really want to go to college and they're actually able to handle the rigors of a college level class even when they're in high school. So we try to offer a wide variety of opportunities for our high school students mm -hmm. so that they're better prepared to go out into the real world and um, help with society. There's something I want to get this What are some programs uh, in a place to motivate the students. We just talked about that. We did. Uh, I can say one of the so at Bennett, where the majority of our English language learners um, attend high school, uh, we have a step up program, an after school program, mm -hmm. where we strongly encourage all students, it's open to everybody, but many of our um, English language learners stay for after school program where they're able to get a meal every day after school and they have a variety of engaging activities. They also have homework help. Um, it's a good social um, time where the students can interact in a non-necessarily academic uh, setting. So it also helps with their um, English acquisition as well. There's something I want to ask. You said there's an after, after, after school, school program. program. Mm -hmm. So for, okay, if you have after school program, it's from which age? We have some programs at all ages. Mostly ours are at the middle and high school. Um, 
some of the uh, elementary school programs um, are funded through outside agencies like Wicomico Rec and Parks, Recreation and Parks has like a kids club. Mm -hmm. um, some of our elementary schools, um, I can think of Prince Street off the top of my head that provides, but others do as well, provide some clubs to tap into student interest. But the, the ske regularly scheduled after school programs that we offer are pretty much at the middle and high school level. So that means if the parents doesn't ha they don't have time to to assist their mm -hmm. child, their children, I mean, so they can send the, the children to the after school program. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to this another one. The can you share with them the phone number they asked? Okay, it's 443 4433-458-0430. You You can call at 443-358-043. Hello? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I'm calling. I have a question for the doctor. For who? The principal. Okay. Is it the principal or the? Let's say the superintendent of the board of education of Waikumiko County. Okay, superintendent. I'm sorry. I I yeah, I came in late, so I didn't know uh, what what already said. something that we're working on. We recognize um, that probably the, the way that we have had our ESOL program structured for a number of years may not be um, the best in terms of meeting the needs of our students and for the very reason that you're talking about, or at least that's one reason, would be the travel time that it takes to travel from a student's home who's in the Wicomico High School School District who then has to travel to James M. Bennett for ESOL. So to answer your question, we are working on a plan that we hope to have in place um, by the beginning, by the fall of next year where we have, where we're working intensely with our students who are new, um, new English language learners who have the most intense needs in what we're calling a newcomers program that will all be in a particular area, a particular facility. Um, but then once they have reached a certain level, we're not dismissing them from the program, but once they've um, achieved well enough that we believe that they can be successful by returning to their home school with ESOL support in their home school, that's what will happen. I don't know if you want to add to that, Dr. Briggs. Yeah, I mean, we, as a former principal at Bennett where those students um, all came, you're exactly right that they miss time at both the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. Um, we actually, over this past year, already made adjustments in, um, with the transportation department so that those students actually do not miss a class. They still miss some time, but they do not miss a class anymore this year. So that was a, a good first step. And the next step in that, as Dr. Hanlon mentioned, is 
having those students go to school in the with the community that they live in mm -hmm. as opposed to having to transport and then go to a different school we think it's important for them to be in the school where um, their neighborhood um, friends and associates are um, but it's still our responsibility to make sure they have the supports they need at those schools as well yeah the, the original the original structure and what's continuing um, for the most part now was based upon the idea that it was more efficient to concentrate your staff, your support, in one location. Mm -hmm. But our ESOL population has grown so much, and in fact last year, um, based upon additional funding that we received from the state as well as from the local government, we have add, added to the human resources that are available for the students who are studying in our ESOL program, and that will also help us to implement this plan that we've talked about where students will be able to stay at their home schools. Hello. All right. Um, okay. I'd like to thank you guys for the good work y'all so much for this. Thank you. I really appreciate the information that you share with us tonight. And um, I still got a couple more questions. If they said a couple one. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer it perfectly. I do know that with our enrollment and because of um, a wide variety of reasons, but we need to make sure we know where everybody is residing, where they live. So those proof of residencies, and that's what I think you were talking about with the cable bill or the electrical bill or the lease, we have to have that for our documentation so that we know that you are indeed living where you say you're leaving or living. Um, you, sir, probably would never lie to us. Unfortunately, we have some people who um, actually, unfortunately, tell a falsehood about where they're living so that they can go to a certain school for whatever reason. So we really do need that documentation um, for our own records um, in case we were to get audited by the state or, the, or the other, somebody else. Um, but students should not be missing any instructional time. So. Um, we can probably maybe talk offline about a, our process or a specific example that you might have had that where we could possibly look to improve our own practices. Um, but unfortunately, we do need that documentation to show where where people are living. We have actually had people from other counties mm -hmm. try to enroll in our school system because we have such a good school system. Um, <laughs> but they don't even live in our county, and we, that's why we need that documentation. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I understand that. For the enrollment process, but for the first thing, a student that was already in the in, in enrolling school and that in the in the middle of the school season, the parent has to move to different locations, and therefore the student has to transfer school. So why why the student have to stay home? They shouldn't and have to stay. You know, it, they shouldn't have to stay home. No, we don't want any kids yeah. staying home. <laughs> I think I think I think it happened over and over.
have uh, utility bills and we have need to come up with the, the kids who not have any for, for uh, almost like two weeks. Just because the team document wasn't in yet. So yeah. I, I find that, you know, it was really kind of like a I think this is yeah. a specific case. Okay. Yeah, I can. I'll apologize for that. We do not want any students staying at home. Uh, attendance matters. Um, we need students in school every day, and I apologize for for that situation. If you or anybody else has any issues, um, whether it's about attendance or documentation or even something, any other issues. Yeah, if you, you feel free to call our central office, which I'll give the number and you can translate it for me. Um, you welcome. Please call our offices so that we can um, deal with the situation and help you as a parent or a community. So, 410-677-4400. Um, that's 410-677-4400. Call our central office and we will get you the, the help that you need and get you in contact with the right person. Okay. Merci pour participation à l'émission Transition. Good and welcome, Nancy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Even though I'm doing a good job, you're welcome. I got my feedback in. Welcome to my wife. 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 Congratulations. Welcome to my wife. Congratulations. And also, I have some of the things you last ended. parce que nous avons l'autre monde qui peut poser des questions très importantes même si on pas là. Donc, merci pour la participation à l'émission. Merci. So do you think it, it, we don't need to talk about a little bit about the enrollment process? Enroll yes, what people need to enroll a child? Okay, um, so we have an enrollment specialist, um, Mrs. Lydia Thomas. And a very nice one. Very nice one. She is very nice. And she, um, although she only speaks English, she has multiple, do all of our documents in every um, home language possible. So she is our point person, and she's actually at our main office, central office, which is um, in, on Northgate Drive, which is behind Lowe's in Salisbury. Um, and if anybody is you know, new to the country, she's our enrollment person, and they should contact um, her at that same number, 410-677-4400. Okay. So the same number? Same number. Donc, un monde qui besoin, sorry, un monde qui besoin inscrire un petit monde, que le soit sinon l'autre pays ou pas, numéro contact pour premier bagala. Et ça me fait rappeler nous, premier bagala. What I want to say, the first thing, uh, when you first come in Waikomiko County, if you want to enroll a child, go straight to the Board of Education. Correct. It's very important for the parents. So, and, and bring any education documents, mm -hmm. report cards, to any education documents that they have, that'll help us figure out the proper you know, grade level based upon age and experience that they've had in the school system. That helps us put them in the right spot. Okay. 
Donc ça, nous devons connaître qui est extrêmement important. Là, nous faisons venir dans la zone. Nous avons besoin d'inscrire petit dans l'école. Le premier bail pour nous faire, ce n'est pas aller directement dans l'école ou choisir où nous allons aller. Mais le premier bail pour faire, c'est dans le bord de la zone. Le bord de l'éducation, le conseil d'éducation qui est dans la zone. Donc, là, on aller là, on va porter tout document qui est rapport à l'éducation petit tout en cours dernier canal de gagner tout document pour qu'à placer dans la classe ni supposé aller ça qui arrive et puis tout le monde a commencé l'école de l'autre côté mais ou même ou vina avec canal de gagner parce que la bonne canal quand même que c'est premier trimestre ou bien deuxième trimestre pour tout le monde en continuer donc avec processus ça il y a cadeau qui côté tout le monde n'a pas aller et l'école tout le monde n'a pas aller avant tout inform them as well et the school should be in the same area where the person reside Correct. Yeah. Donc, l'école a mis des gens, a placé des gens, c'est dans la même zone que vous vivez là. Donc, il est important pour qu'on ait, parce qu'on a des petits toits dans telle école, mais c'est la zone que vous habitez là, il faut pas mettre des gens. Et pour qu'il y ait plus d'informations, vous avez besoin d'inscrire un petit l'école là, ou bien dans le bord là, pour mes bagages là, pour qu'on ait ces numéros ça, pour capter, pour qu'on inscrit petit tout, c'est 410 677 44 00. 410 677 44 00. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, this is it, and I think uh, we share a lot of information today mm -hmm. with our public, and I think they will be able to. I have a lot of questions. Can you share with me? Because I don't see it on the. <sighs> Because I don't want to leave them without them, so. Okay, one second, please. Paul, will you reply? Answer what awesome program, okay? Okay. I don't see other. No, I don't see other, but I see a lot of people watching the show. Okay? Good. Yeah. Yeah, I know people are very interested in uh, the education, so it's a reason why. So, do you want to add something or do you want to share because this is the time to to say it was a pleasure, but first of all, what do you want to share with us or with the public of Transition Show? Well, I, I just, well, thank you so much for having us and for... Um, covering very important topics, and I think it's my understanding that we're going to be having some other staff members come back yes, who are, yes. um, have expertise in particular areas that might be able to uh, delve into some more details, and we're happy to do that because it's so important that, um, that we work with community partners, okay, including yes. the media, mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and just emphasizing again the importance of parent involvement. and. If, if parents have questions, to please call the number. Please come see us at our central office, and we're happy to try to assist because we want all of our students to be successful. We have students and parents with language barriers, then we understand that that makes it more challenging, but we will, mm -hmm. um, we will work as hard as we can to um, assist with the success of the student. Okay, thank you, Dr. Holland. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. We're, uh, as Dr. Hanlon mentioned, we're, we're committed to uh, meeting the needs of all of our students. Um, we have 15,000 kids. We actually have a little over 1,150 um, English language learners throughout our system. It's a growing population and we're committed to meeting their needs. And we know it's hard work, but we're willing to work with you guys and, and your community mm -hmm. to uh, serve your students. So for me and for also staff as well, it was a pleasure having you here today in the transition show. And because our mission to that show is to educate people and from them. I have a question. <laughs> okay. How much control does parents have over the contents being put? <clears throat> Over the what? Contents being taught. Uh, 
Well, we are required by the Maryland State Department of Education to teach certain curriculum. Um, if parents have questions about what is being taught, mm -hmm. then we need to know what those questions are so that we can, we can understand what the concerns are, if there are concerns, and we can better explain why certain things are being taught um, and how they're being taught. And that answers the question, or Dr. Grayson, you want to add You're 100% correct. I mean, um, parents have the right and, and should want to know what's mm -hmm. um, being taught in the classroom, and that goes back to the parental involvement, the dialogue between the parent and the teacher. And if, the, as Dr. Hanlon mentioned, if there's any questions, reach out to the school, reach out to the teacher, right. and we'll, we're here to, to answer any questions they might have. Okay. So thank you. As you know, everything has an end, so it was a pleasure, and I feel honored having uh, talked to two doctors today. It's not only me, it's not a hospital, but I have two <laughs> doctors right. on too. So it was uh, the superintendent of the Board of Education of Wycombe County, and the other doctor, Mr. Wayne, the assistant, right? Assistant. Yes. But they are doing a great job for our community and education field. So it was a pleasure to be with you today and transition show. We will see you next Friday at the same time for another topic more interesting. Sac n'a pas position, il faut 